Hey everybody, this is Rachel Nagel and this is the Soil Spinach Homesteading Show. So today I wanted to talk to you about a little bit about kimchi. I have a friend a couple of days ago that um, it was like 11 at night. Well, she's in Australia, so there's a big time difference. And she just sent me kimchi recipe. And I'm like, yeah, kimchi recipe. So she's the inspiration for this video today. Thank you, Sabrina. And yeah, so I was uh, cutting up my veggies to make a kimchi tomorrow. Uh, kimchi takes longer than other ferments to prepare because you need to cut it and salt it beforehand for a long time. I'm even wondering, I can't remember, I read it, I read about it a couple of times. And I can't remember if yeah, I need to brine it, so just add water to the to the salts and the vegetables, or if I just salt it. So, I mean, I put some mushrooms in there, so that's really that's really water filled. And some cucumbers. So I'll see. I'll just let them sweat for a while and see how it goes. And if I see that there's not enough water that's been extracted out of the vegetables, I'll be adding some water and letting them sit overnight, and then see how it goes tomorrow but when I was cutting that up I ended up with a whole bunch of stuff that I cut off like I don't know the first first leaf of the cabbage which was a little bit rough and bean ends and celery ends and cucumber ends and carrot ends and the celery butt and I figured I might as well make something out of this. Why not? Fermentation takes care of any hardness. If you let it ferment for a little bit longer, it becomes softer. So like I have a bean stem here. That's gonna be like it's gonna be crunchy. It's not it's not gonna be a hard stem anymore. And like you guys know, I hate wasting food, so I'm gonna make a ferment out of it. And the one that I made with tomatoes is all gone. I put them in the beans today. The beans were delicious. So, easy peasy. Again, I'm using my food processor, manual food processor. The last time I didn't tell the name of it. It's, um, I don't know how to say it, Xylus, Xylus food processor. Small, so it's on the smaller side, but I really, really like it. I've been using it for a few months of pretty hardcore use because I, I overfill it most of the time. That's how you break them. Like right now, it's too full. God, Rachel. I always try to make things faster and end up breaking stuff. No good. Uh, so you might have to cut stuff. This is the cabbage and the cabbage butt. So it's really thick. I just have to chop it smaller. Oh, and I'm going to need a bowl. Like why, why waste this food? Even if you have compost, like that's not wasting food because it's feeding your microbes in the compost. But if you can still eat it, why, why not? I mean, and if you look at this and you say, oh, I would never do that. Well, look, you know what? No problem. Just don't do it. But you haven't been hungry enough, I guess. I mean, I never... I've never had much money, but I've always eaten good food because I'm really, really thrifty with food. And I've mentioned before, we're mostly plant-based, so for us, eating is dirt cheap. Usually, usually. 
like dirt cheap as in a cabbage is inexpensive, but then I'll buy like chia seeds, which is just for a little pack, it's like nine bucks. But I, I look at the nutritional value and not at the price. Chia seeds hold a lot more nutrition than the same nine dollar piece of meat that you could buy, you know. So my chia seed pack, a little bit, a little bit every day, will go a long way. Or hemp hearts or like, you know, stuff you don't buy every day. Spirulina, powder, stuff like that. They're expensive, but you use so little of it. And it just packs your food with nutrition that... You know, if you just if you just have potatoes left over and like a ferment, you can have potatoes ferment and a dash of hemp hearts on it, and it's good to eat and it's delicious. And it costs you about I don't know the price of six potatoes and like what did I say? Ferment. You're using whatever you would have thrown out, so free and. The chia seeds, it might be 10 cents of chia seeds. It's not fancy, but it's nutritious. And when you're hungry, you want to eat. And okay, so this is what it gave me. Like, that's a lot of stuff, man. I'm going to be able to pack my mason jar. I was going to add these beans and a little bit of cabbage. But now I see that I have I have enough for my mason jar just right there. <coughs> so I just wanted to add a little bit of ginger. I have a nugget, ginger nugget. Should be fine. Ginger's fun too in ferments because it, it really helps make a carbonation. Car carbonation? It makes it fizzy faster. So kombucha people know this. During their second ferments, they add a little bit of ginger or ginger extract or whatever, and it becomes nice and fizzy. So I want to see if it's going to do the same for this. Now you add your salt. Somebody asked me how much salt you used. It depends how long you want to ferment it for. If it's within a few days, you can use less salt. If it's two weeks or two months or six months down the road, maybe you wanted to use more salt, let it ferment slower in a dark, cool place. But it's April now, it's the end of April. And I'm going to be, it's, gonna, it's probably going to get warm shortly here anyways. So I'm just going to leave this out in the cupboard for maybe a week. So I didn't add too much there. But like for the kimchi, you want, you want the vegetables to feel almost squeaky. It really, it really comes down to taste. Ferments is all about taste. Like in some, in some traditional ferments of colder place like Iceland, Iceland, they have a fish ferment that, or like Alaska, they they make a fish ferment that they they pack in the ground. And it basically becomes all gelatinous and gluey with time, and a lot of people can't stand it. But nobody gets sick from it as long as it's done the traditional way, which is keeping plastics out of it. And yeah, they, like, they love it. Or the people that do love it, love it. It's all about taste. If you don't like it, then add it to another meal or... Hide it in a spaghetti sauce or 
blend it up some more into uh, your sauce for your pizza. Or don't throw it away because it's good. It's nutritious for you. It can be used in a lot of places. So you can see I'm just packing it down. I don't think this is going to make much water. So I'm going to get a bit of water to put onto it. And I'm just getting it from the tap. I don't mind using the tap here because it's well water. You have a drilled well. But if I'd be in town, and there would be chlorine. I don't know if they have municipal water here, but in most towns that I've lived, they have chlorine in the water. And that I wouldn't use it right away. I'd let it sit. So, just going to add a little bit more. And then... Last time I didn't put the olive oil seal on it. This time I will. I have enough space. I'll get closer. I have enough space in my jar left to put to put a nice little um, seal on it, olive oil seal. I'll show you what I mean by that. If I can find my olive oil. I should have had it out. Okay, sorry about that. See, if I knew how to edit video, I could just take that part out. But I don't know how to do that. I need help. If somebody knows about video editing, let me know. Okay. So I just want to make it cover the rim of the top there. Can you see that? You can see there's like a layer of it. And if there's any food that's on the top that's poking out, you just have to poke them down. And they'll stay down. I haven't heard of other people using this method. And I don't know why. Because it's worked really, really well for me. And it's really easy to do. Like, I don't have to worry about finding a rock and cleaning the rock and then getting the rock all messed up. I don't know. I like simplicity, right? This is simple. This is food that somebody else would have thrown out. That's going to become a delicious condiment. And it's a mason jar full. And I, I, I say condiment because I, I eat it with other stuff. I, I don't make a meal out of it, you know. So I'm having like a starch. Well, I eat some of this with it. It's going to help me digest the starch. But that's it, guys, for that ferment. Tomorrow or the day after, I'm going to show you how to do kimchi. So look forward to that. I look forward to that. Join me for that. Kimchi is really nice, really nice taste in ferment. Um, traditional Korean. Uh, I'm probably not making it the traditional way. That's okay. It's going to be kimchi anyway. Until next time, thanks for being on the, or watching the Soil Spinach Homesteading Show. Bye.